Hello everyone, what I've got for you today is a match that was recently played on the brand new map that was just released by some of the pros who I'm sure are going to be showing us probably what we're going to be seeing discovered across this map over the next coming couple of days. Yeah, we still have to figure out a meta for this map, so I'm excited to see exactly what some of the best of the best put on a show for us. Spawning on the front lines here, sort of on the northern section here. Yeah, the front lines on the northern section of the blue team. A commander that goes by the name of Rebel Node, clocking in at 43 true skill, silver chevrons to boot. My goodness, Rebel, Rebel Node, certainly one of those players that's played bar, played, I believe, TA as well. I'm, I, I believe they're an OG TA player, like so many of the bar pros are. I was talking to Dolphy on the stream the other day. If you don't know who Dolphy is, Dolphy's another pro. He calls himself retired, but I don't think you ever retire from this sort of life. The beyond all reason life. <laughs> Either way, certainly well experienced with the game. and going to be showing us some premier strats. All the way across the map, representing the red team as an armada commander, goes by the name of MBT, previously known as Mom's Boy Toy, but I suppose uh, shortened for perhaps YouTube sponsorships or otherwise just keeping the mouth clear. MBT going to be going for a bot lab here as well, and I think that makes a lot of sense. There is a lot of hills and curves and whatnot on this map that you have to navigate. Although, that being said, right out here in the middle of the map, the main centerpiece of this map, the, the brilliant river winding across its face, it is nice and flat. So maybe those vehicles can find some perches over here. Definitely a tricky one. Now, we played this match live on stream, actually, on uh, last Tuesday, I believe it was, as of recording this video. Streams, by the way, are on Tuesdays and Saturdays from 12 to 4 PDT. In case you'd like to tune in and hang out and have some fun, we usually play some mixed up matches. Oftentimes, Flo likes to join us and tune up the matches as well. So if you're looking to join in on some extra large games, those uh, 10v10s, 12v12s, even up to the 30v30s, if it's on a special occasion and the lobby is absolutely popping, there's an excellent opportunity for you to do so. Anywho, the way that it played out on stream was basically everybody fortified up on their river. These little mountains right here were extremely prevalent. They made a very difficult or very uh, concise but pointed argument for not pushing forward because usually there were art there were agitators, there were pit bulls, there were persecutors, there were all those pop-up static defense that were very, very difficult, very expensive to justify pushing into. Obviously, we haven't quite gotten there in this game yet, but I'm sure we will eventually. Strawberry already moving her commander forward. Love to see it. Yeah, there we are. Looks like we do have an air player here from the uh, red team. The tan commander goes by the name of 7511. Already heading across the map with a bomber. We did have the transport headed out to Strawberry, and I saw another one handed out here. Looks like to the Maroon commander. No, MBT actually got that transport. Either way, sending transports to the backliners so that they can move to the front line. Or at the very least, even the frontliners who have to cover a tremendous distance up here. Definitely helping them set up a forward front line quite a bit quicker here. Bomber coming in. It's a whirlwind, so it only needs one. Will it find a decent enough target? There we go. That looks like a good target to me. Down go the payload. Collide with that metal extractor and pop it. Oh, just barely not killing that solar panel right there. That's a little bit un un unfavorable here for the tan bomber that is moving across the map, but not the end of the world by any means. There we go. Yeah, we're going to bomb down that metal extractor as well. Quite nice. Wasn't fully completed, so you don't get the full value already, but this bombing run is fabulous. Man, it was just the other cast we saw this bomber, this same exact bomber, but minus the scout. And we saw how effective it could be, but this is what absolute pro-level micro looks like. You can see how many targets this thing has the opportunity to shoot at. It is absolutely devastating. Brilliant play right there. Took out three solar panels and the mechs. That is 400 or just about metal right down the drain right there for the blue commander, who will eventually shoot it down. But man, that hurts quite a lot here. Now, the saving grace, of course, being that there's all these trees, these trees going to be quite good for uh, reclamation, turning their worthless wood and leaf and chloroplast into useful energy for the cause. MBT actually very aggressive on the placement here, moving forward with the combination of the hot pink bots to try and establish a baseline. But I think it's actually a great move. Yeah, I think if you if you stole for too long and you don't move forward like this, this river becomes too decisive and it's very, very difficult to actually figure out exactly where you're going to base an attack from. This is a really difficult angle to push into. The uh, angles on the southern side are very difficult to push into. Yeah, really only your, your biggest option is going to be these big flat grounds right here. For the uh, blue team, it's going to be this northern side. For the red team, it's going to be the southern side. Love that incong incongruity right there. Makes it a little bit more interesting in my opinion. Strawberry going for a little bit of eco in the back line. We've got a build turret coming up right here. We've got tons and tons of metal extractors. This is one thing I love about this map. It does actually feature quite a lot of mechs, so it does mean that you can get that economy going pretty quick here. 
I expect to see a T2 transition relatively soon here, probably from a frontliner, actually. I imagine a frontline player would probably be even quicker to get a... Yeah, everybody's pretty much playing frontline. You can see not really room for a tech player. There's room for a bomber or, uh, sorry, an air player. In this case, going for bombers. Not really room for a tech player, though, and I don't really think you need it. Nice catch right here by the shuriken. Tau... Tau... Nix, uh, the brown player. <laughs> Certain I didn't produce that name correctly, but uh, the brown commander here benefiting from those ticks, saving the day and saving, more importantly, those metal extractors from total denial. This is some good stuff right here. Grunt's getting ready to push forward here. The uh, red commander MBT says you should be here to the uh, K Corp commander trying to push forward here. It's awkward though. I mean, this spot is already occupied. There's a bunch of LLTs. There's a bunch of other stuff. This is a really, really awkward angle to push forward. Looks like MBT is going to potentially take this, yeah, into his own hands, his own mechanical claw to try and move the commander up to this high ground here to break this front line. I think it's just about the only way you're going to do it at this point with, <coughs> pardon me, with Raiden already well dug in fortifying this area. And MBT does have to be careful here. It's not like there's no units on this hill. It's definitely going to be an expensive one to take. Oh yeah, this is a great engagement for these pawns right here. LLT support as well. Going to blast down a whole bunch of those. Grunts up on the high ground as well. Going to try and deal with MBT. At the very least, scaring that commander off. Wouldn't mind seeing Radon go for a uh, anti-air tower over here just to make sure that that commander can't transport up like that. But you can definitely see the vision, right? Trying to lay on the pressure thick so that the powder blue commander is pushed off this line and the red team secures this, this high ground. If we can lock down this high ground, that is definitely a tremendous benefit. Similar plans right here. You can see AI Easy, the purple commander, trying to push forward into Phil RS5. Uh, is that Phil Rainbow 6-5? Is that what that is? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Maroon Commander here, suffering the uh, the wrath of the pawn as it moves forward. Ooh, Spike Camera just barely stays alive right there. It was definitely spotted by AI Easy, but will not go down. TA God going to be going up against our Brown Commander here. We have a bot lab, tra or sorry, a vehicle lab transition right now for the Brown Commander. That's interesting, but I think it works. Instead of going tech, in instead of going up the tech path, instead we're going across to the left and around to the side. I like it. I like it quite a bit, actually. Nem's doing largely the same thing here. You can see a couple of vehicles mixed into this composition, most of them produced by Metal Spice, but handed over here, or uh, do we have a forward? Yeah, okay, we are handing them over. Yeah, quite nice. Putting a little bit of pressure on Strawberry. Actually, a lot of pressure here. 7511 is going to have to do something. Ooh, we have the constructors moving forward right here from Strawberry. There we go. They do get eventually re backwards. This is a critical moment. Strawberry going for... Some uh, solar panels also going for some wind turbines, all this stuff. But there's not a tremendous force on the field to actually defend all this. And there you can there you can see both commanders being transported back here to try and degun down all these breakaway units. Most of them are rocketeers, shouldn't be too difficult to try and degun away. But you definitely do have to be a little bit careful about it. Oh, degun it, degun it. Oh, Nemzi had the opportunity there. You can actually degun transports to kill commanders like that. It's a really funny interaction, but it does work quite powerfully. Strawberry being a little more cautious with her commander, as it is on lower health here. Yeah, I mean, this is a great army right now for the purple commander. It's those rocketeers providing that slow but steady firepower. And eventually, they will whittle down the maroon commander and his many units. One for missile trucks here. Interesting decision. We're playing with the uh, missile truck rebalance, by the way. No tracking on those missile trucks, but they do a little bit more damage than they used to. Medium tank over here, getting some value. Yeah, quite nice. Takes down two mexes. Gonna be a while before we can rebuild those. We'll either have to transport a commander over there or send one from the lab over here. A couple of those not latched onto the lab, actually. We're going for the geothermal, but I think there's enough grunts pulled from the reinforcements in order to actually clean all this up. I like the vision, but it's just a couple of tanks too short here. I hear shurikens. Where are they? Ah, there they are. Jumping on top of some of the Rocketeers here, probably not necessary in all honesty, uh, but why not take a super efficient trade whenever you do have the opportunity to? And Strawberry definitely agreeing here, jumping her grunts directly on top of those Rocketeers to shut them down. And of course, leaving those juicy, juicy corpses to be reclaimed here. Yeah, you can see MBT already sending the Resbots over in that direction. I wonder if we're going to go for a Resurrection here or if we're just going to go ahead and reclaim all of that and go for a T2. It looks like we already have the T2 lab up and running in the back line right here. MBT has sort of been playing a, a joint T1, T2 frontline, backline, sort of a role. It's an all-encompassing role, but I would expect absolutely nothing less from the best of the best. Rebel Node here, still trying to clean up this attack from Mr. Elusive. 
This is the this is the benefit that you allow yourself, right? Because Mr. Elusive pushed forward right here, grab these metal extractors. It's not a tremendous metal advantage, but it is big enough that eventually what ends up happening is you can afford to have someone go for a little bit greedier of a push in the back line, like MBT is now showing us here. Front line is falling slowly but surely though, so we're gonna need some of those TT units on the fronts here. Whether it's welders, sharpshooters, sprinters, hounds, any of it, it'll all be extremely instrumental in bringing down all these units right here, but eh, you know, alas, this is mostly missile trucks. Missile trucks, not not the, uh, the pinnacle of a threat. Dangerous to be sure, especially in large numbers. But definitely not going to be the most major threat to these Rocketeers here. The medium tank's certainly quite a bit more imposing, and the pawn's going to be quite annoying. MBT guarding this geothermal. Yeah, you can see these pawns were pulled, sent around right here by Rebel Node, splitting off half his army. Quite risky, actually, because he is falling back right now, but trying to get some value out with these pawns. Oh, they'll actually make it all the way around to Strawberry's facility. If they can pop the build power here, I'd say it's probably worth it. Or a couple of those A solars would be not bad either. Reclaim cries out MBT. Trying to help Strawberry uh, min-max the losses here. Oh, we're going for the build power. Oh, it will stay up, though. Nice rebuild constructor micro right there from Strawberry. Keeps all that alive. We'll also get the LLT up and sending the grunts. Beautiful shuriken plays right there as well. Love to see it. This is the absolute best of the best. Love the teamwork that these guys whip out for us. We did eventually go for the Resbot here. Or the uh, Resurrection, pardon me, out of the Resbot to get these Rocketeers back up and running. Not the end of the world, although I think I'd like to see those just handed over. No reason to... Uh, keep these units down south here for the the red commander mbt and it is time we go for a hound transition man 11 minutes and 30 seconds into the game and we're already looking at our first t2 spam coming out here just goes to show how much quicker these guys play huh the mass shuriken wave is quite nice i've said it before but i'll say it again the shuriken have a very easy time finding value into the mid and late game because you need such a specific tool, i.e. anti-air, in order to actually effectively counter them, they can very, very easily find some significant value. Catching pawns, catching grunts, catching any of these little or chaff units, but even some of the T2 units are susceptible, right? Some of the slower moving ones come to mind here. I would imagine, for instance, mammoths or sumos or uh, fat boys, anything like that that's very slow moving and prone to be jumped on like this uh, by these super fast moving paralyzation drones. Lovely, lovely stuff. Going to make it very, very easy to hold this. Hold! <laughs> Indeed, I think that's the idea here. Forces will be redirected, and eventually, there we go. The Hounds do hit the front line, so that's quite nice. We do see Hounds out of the Cyan Commander, though. Very good play from Nems, who's pushed forward and used that metal to transition for a T2 lap. It's a forward T2 lap. That's why those Hounds have hit the front line so quickly. We'll see if those Hounds can be traded out really efficiently against a lot of these Rocketeers. It's effectively their job if they manage to. Could start to be the downfall of the Strawberry Empire. Shurikens, there we go. Yeah, jumping on top of more of these pawns. Making it very easy for these hounds to fire away. Hounds are quite nearsighted, so they don't actually see out about as far as they can shoot. Means that in combination with shurikens, they actually become really efficient because obviously the shurikens grant you a little bit of line of sight while paralyzing whatever it takes to uh, allow those hounds to fire at. Can be extremely, extremely efficient. Metal Spice pretty far forward here. Yeah, Hounds are going to blast out a commander pretty quickly. Looking at it here to try and gauge how quickly. Yeah, about 5% per shot or so. Not bad. Just barely more than a Rocketeer, but obviously they fire quite a bit faster and their projectiles hit quite a bit more, more often, more accurately. Yeah, here they are. Shurikens, the absolute heroes of the day. Saving the red team, turning this fairly efficient fight into an extremely efficient fight. These are the trades that you need to see if you want to stay in a game like this, where you've already lost your front line. We have Fiends burning forward right here as well on the northern side. Beautiful, beautiful plays all around right now from the red team. Absolutely looking like a comeback. Now, this is a uh, trenched position if I've ever seen one. We do have a gauntlet that was built right here from the brown commander. Decided to go ahead and build a gauntlet on the front lines. I guess I don't hate it. It will be able to blast away at all of this T1 chaff. But we are rapidly approaching the era of T2, and that's right around the time that you see these T1 static defenses start to se severely fall off. T2 transition on the bottom here for Dentka. The blue team, for the first time in a good long while, actually on the retreat. Oscar Lowe goes down. The Powder Commander reduced to atoms here. K Corp, no doubt, will be quick to reclaim that. This T2 transition was monumental 
if we can capitalize on this, I think we can regain so much ground that we can make up the difference that we had for a good long while. The blue team, obviously, with an advantage positional, positionality-wise. There we go. Tricky one today, huh? There's your there's your word of the day. So funny, though. We do have a T1, T1 battle going on on the southern side versus the uh, full-blown T2 battle up on the northern side. Ironic that it's the... Uh, maybe not ironic. Maybe it's telling that it's the higher skill commanders that have gone T2 versus the higher skill commanders and then the uh, the lower down the ladder commanders, although our Baron is here. Hmm. Yeah, our Baron pretty much up there with uh, Rebel Node as well, so maybe a bit strange that we're still on T1. Looks like our Baron's looking to correct that immediately. We do have Sheldon pumped out already and headed towards the front line. We're actually going for a dual lab setup. Okay, so we're going to go for Grunt Spam, I imagine here. Uh, maybe a couple of res bots. Sure, why not? Whoa, big old bomber swell, by the way, from the purple commander as well. Oh, that's an interesting choice. Yeah, so, yeah, easy figure as well. I'm not achieving all too much with these Rocketeers anymore. I can transition into T2 and try and fight them that way, but they're probably already well into T2. One way that you might see some tremendous value is just by going for a whole bunch of bombers. Yeah, send them across the map, try and target down specific infrastructure. Because so many shurikens have been produced, you do know roughly that the air player has been a little bit less uh, surefire on the shuriken production. Well, this is gonna hurt. Loads of Rocketeers falling in the carnage. So those hounds blast them away. Only takes about four shots for a hound to kill a Rocketeer there. Obviously, we have well over that many hounds. More than enough to blast away a bunch of this static defense, T1 units, you name it. Raiden is forced into full retreat. Oh, bombers are gonna be pulled to address this. It's a great, a great portion for the bombers to bomb. Obviously, going up this little hillside here is gonna be quite difficult for the hounds. It does mean we sacrifice the bombers, though. <laughs> There's the counter bomber wave coming across right here. All right, tan player going for some bombing as well. Ooh, okay, gonna carpet bomb those metal extractors. Never seen metal extractors as dead as that. Uh, there is enough fighters right here from the tan commander, though. Yeah, beautifully done. More than enough fighters to support the bomber wave here, but also enough to clean up the bombers right there from the purple commander. Just not enough fighters right here from the purple in order to do the same thing. And they come carpet bombing whatever they can. Definitely the strength of the T1 bomber is that it's a wide area of effect. So if you have a lot of smaller, less health health bitten chaff, you can sometimes carpet bomb it down very efficiently. There we go. An entire T1 economic setup completely reduced to atoms right there. Beautiful, beautiful bombing setups. This is what we're talking about. Okay, that one didn't connect as well. Uh, we had a retarget here on the lab. Okay. Yeah, we can see these are uh, trying desperately to bomb down the laboratory and the accompanying setup having a having a rough time but that's okay there we go lab goes down hounds continuing their push up here by the way want to highlight that those hounds are continuing to move forward we do have a big medium tank run by as well but i think the game is going to be told by these bombers in the back line beautiful beautiful play right here by 7511 taking down so much of this precious economy right now. T2 Lab will be the next target. Man, the Whirlwinds are so good, huh? The fact that those Whirlwinds are still relevant in the T2 airspace, very, very nice. Down goes the T2 Lab. It had just started up production of something, but it will never see the light of day. I'm gonna start going after metal extractors here. The Amexes are gonna take a little bit to blast apart. Not gonna be the end of the world, but we don't have any answer to these bombers. Yeah, at this point, there's just no answer at all. Amex is quite difficult to bring down. But what really are you going to do about it? Yeah. There's no there's no more air player here for the blue team. Constructors trying desperately to get some build power back up and running. Oh no, this is a nightmare. Here come the bombers once more. Luckily, some flak was set up right here in the green facility that will eventually shoot these bombers down. But obviously, those bombers have done more than their fair share of work. Tremendous play right there from the air player here for the red team. Hopefully we transition to T2 here. I feel like getting a, uh, a nice T2 lab up and running is probably on the back of that going to be well justified. Going for a bunch of T1 fighters right here. Pretty good for defending. As someone pointed out, they're very efficient defensively. Not so efficient offensively. So bearing that in mind, I guess I don't mind seeing a whole bunch of T1 spam just to hold the line here. Oh, lightning turret's actually firing away at Sheldon. That's not supposed to happen. There we go. Fiend's moving front here. It's like, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. We'll, uh, we'll take the brunt of the lightning damage for you. Just let the Sheldon do their thing in the background, firing away at full power. Very nice pull right here. Metal Spice actually way too far forward. 
Yeah, those fiends take only a second to blast down a commander, and with the Sheldon support, it'll take even less than that. Down goes that commander in green. Gone and reduced to atoms. Big spider pole over here, okay. Always a fan of the spider bots, the uh, Armada T2 rocket spiders. Very, very powerful, especially against static defense, but if you incorporate a couple of the Webbers, and I did see them here briefly, you can also do some tremendous work with those because they essentially make anything static, i.e. they paralyze it. Pretty suiting for a spider, right? Makes a lot of sense. Now, we did trade commanders here. We had uh, commander going down over here, but we also had the uh, brown commander going down over on the southern side right now. Nice. Nice self-destruct. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful self-D right there. Yeah, I realized it wasn't going to get all too much value out of that, so might as well self-D. I talk about it all the time, but oftentimes I don't actually get a great example of how powerful that self-D can be. Maybe that was an excellent example for anybody, any of the doubters out there. Any of the doubters in chat. Hey, those recoin spiders being so good. One of the things that makes the reclaim si spider so powerful is obviously the fact that they can reclaim their corpses of the units that fall, right? So you can see they'll reclaim the corpses of these spiders right here. As the spiders die, and even as the Webbers die, the Webbers will reclaim all those corpses and feed it back into the in, into the economy, making this a really ridiculously efficient army cop. Ah, they're also resistant to EMP. Makes them quite good against the shurikens here. Oh, they... <laughs> Webber spiders actually EMPing the shurikens. Oh, how the turntables. Yep. This is this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, see those Webbers? They're, they're reclaiming while they're fight commanded right here. It means that all this wreckage is just going to go back to the purple commanders. You can see, completely full on metal and energy right now. Why on earth are we not producing units? AI easy with a little bit of an APM stall here. I think we're maybe thinking about going into a fusion reactor. Yeah, there we go. We're going to go for a cloakable fusion reactor. Don't mind it. Obviously, forward fusion reactor going to be quite a bit more vulnerable. Don't mind whatsoever going for a cloakable one. A little bit more costly, but you also produce a little bit more energy, which is always nice. You can also turn it off if you want the extra energy at no additional cost. Well, I guess there is an additional cost, but you can always... You get more energy if you so choose to. You have options. And if bar is anything, it's a game about options. I was thinking about that, actually. I was thinking about... Once again, comparing Beyond All Reason to StarCraft, and the way that the tech ladder works in StarCraft is essentially only upwards. You could think of it like a tree, where it only goes, you only, you know, you start in one spot and then you put down a building or, or uh, you research something or, well, I guess it's just buildings in StarCraft. But anyway, you put down your building and you, you unlock a new tier of units upwards and then you put down another building and you unlock a new tier of units upwards. And that's kind of generalized because it's a little different for every race, right? But Beyond All Reason, it's kind of all at the bottom. <laughs> you sort of have every option at your disposal right at the very get-go. And then you expand upwards in a direct line, right? You kind of you kind of have this pyramid structure where you, you can go you can go oh sorry, I'm in F5 mode. There you go. You can go bots, vehicles, air, uh, hovercraft, and then you can go the T2 variant of all this, right? Shipyards, whatever. And then you go to the T3 gantry. So all leads all all roads eventually lead to Rome. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. The, the difference in the structures here. Nice spy bot right there. Paralyzes one of the Razorbacks. Beautiful way of dealing with those T3 units. Paralyzing them. Keeping them well stunned. Looks like we're going for the D-gun here. There we go. Nice. Would have liked to capture command, but maybe didn't have time for it. Easy to forget about the capture command. It's one of those weird semi-superpowers that the commander has. The uh, decoy commander also has that power, by the way. In case you were curious and wanted to see a cheeky strategy, you can try and uh, mass capture your enemy's forces using cloaked commanders. <laughs> Good luck with it. I doubt it'd work all too well, but who knows? Just maybe. Looks like the end of this T1 fortified zone. Those Sheldon are going to blast apart that T1 static defense just about as quickly as they can fire. TA God will be forced off the front lines here if the fiends don't blast him into the dirt. Yeah, there we go. Only takes a couple of shells from those Sheldon to blast it away either. Eh, we do have a radar jammer up though. Convenient radar jammer. We'll keep this alive, at least for the time being. Or maybe not. Yeah, maybe not, I guess. TA God cloaks. Not gonna help you though. Commander goes down and the Sheldon march forward. 
talk about a tick spam, my goodness. Hundreds and hundreds of ticks and grunts and all the rest of it come pouring through right now. Razorback's here to hold the middle of the map right now. I think our Sheldon balls are pretty big though. That's a, that's a clip for sure. I think our Sheldon balls are definitely big enough to hold off the T3. Especially with proper kiting. I think it'll all be well. Mauser fire. Quite ravaging. There we go. One way to very efficiently blast all this down. Go for an EMP missile. I did see the paralyzer. Somewhere around here. Yeah, there it is. That paralyzer missile. Quite good for shutting down static defense or... Well, really anything. Turns basically anything that can be paralyzed completely off. For a good long while, too. I believe it's like 20 seconds or something. Maybe more than that. And uh, Mauser on the retreat. Gotta be so careful about that. Luckily, I think we have enough that it doesn't matter. But you do have to be careful about it. Can't help but feel like this spam of units is not achieving all too much in this northern side. Not like I think they'd achieve all too much more against the Razorbacks over here. Ah, right, here we go. Strawberry sniffed out that T3 gantry and immediately starts headed for it. This Razorback will come out in time, though. Could be the savior that this gantry needs. Gotta go after the build power, though. Yep, there we go. Start blasting it down immediately. Oh, so close. There we go. That'll be the death of it. Build power does pop right here, meaning that no more T3 will come out, at least not anytime quickly. Nem's in a whole lot of trouble right here, trying desperately to clean up all the fiends. That's a uh, friendly fiend there. <laughs> I know, I know. When they're all shooting fire all over the place, it's hard to tell. That T3 gantry coming up here for the purple commander, too. The uh, blue team definitely way quicker on the T3 transition right now, but it's uh, going to be counteracted by the red team's superior economic advantage. You can see we're on a second APHIS right here for Strawberry, a third APHIS right here for MBT. The economies of the air player are looking pretty fabulous as well. We have a fusion reactor and a big old spamulatory over here for K-Corp. Yeah, the, econ the, the economic advantage for the red team going up against the, the efficiency advantage of the T3 units. That's what it's all about. Obviously, the ideal scenario would be having the eco advantage and the T3 units. But sometimes you gotta pick and choose. This is great, though. Wreck T3, indeed. That T3 gantry will never see another T3 unit walk out of its hulls. Down it goes in a brilliant explosion. 4,800 metal. Can't help but wonder if that should be reclaimed quite quickly here. There they go. Yeah, the rest bots already moving in. Those greedy grave robbers trying desperately to get some of that juicy, juicy reclaim. This is what I was talking about, about these hills being so difficult to take down. We have a tactical nuke up on the hill as well, by the way. But it's so difficult. Oh, Commander goes down right there. That's a little bit of an oopsie. Yeah, we're forced to retreat now because the entire bush has been dealt with here. Our Baron holding on to the deer end, trying desperately to keep it all together. Sheldon blasting away at whatever they can in the middle of the map. The red team, despite falling behind there, ever so slightly to those T3 units. Oh, spy bots, nice. Nice. Spy bots here detonating on a whole bunch of these webbers, that's quite nice. Going to be at the very least allowing some of these units to jump on top of them. Haha, <laughs> we have some abductor abductors too. Abductors have a big old EMP beam on their schnozzle, makes them quite good for paralyzing super heavy units like T3 stuff. As exactly we can see, those Sheldon were completely shut off by those EMB beams. Always a good idea if you're going for Armada to go for a couple of those. Just a few of them. Don't need too many, but just a few of them can have a crazy, crazy powerful effect across any battlefield. Oh, let's find the fusion. Uh-oh. We found the sneaky fusion. Down it goes, or at least one of them. Does not matter, though. Strawberry has pried open an opening for herself. The the armor has been weakened, softened, and exposed. And now she's trying to leak a whole bunch of units through. You can see the Grunt spam, the Fiend spam, the Sheldon's marching forward. Just about all of it marching out of the laboratories right now. Running towards the front line at as fast a pace as it can muster. The interaction here is hilarious. So we're paralyzing this constantly to make sure that it can't fire the tactical nuke. Essentially nullifying the 1200 metal that we put in there. Uh, with the 1600 metal we put over there. Also, what on earth? The tank missile is cheaper than the EMP missile? Huh. I guess to be fair, the EMP missile has a way, way larger range. Still, feels a bit interesting. Little details like that that even I don't know. Trust me, I know everything. 
I absolutely know everything. It's well, well known that I know everything. Plenty of Aphis in the background. At this point, we're just background passively growing the eco here. No sense in uh, letting that eco, you know, micromanage or be micromanaged. We might as well just let it kind of passively grow up. It'll eventually invest itself to death uh, or exponentially. Not, not quite to death, but I guess upwards. Upwards and outwards exponentially. Resbot's in the mix here, though, for our orange commander. That's what it's all about. Eating up all that juicy, juicy T3. Obviously, one advantage of beating the T3 with your T2 army, you get the you get to reap the benefits of having killed a T3 unit, meaning juicy, juicy metal lying all over the battlefield, which you can obviously turn into a whole bunch more T2 units. Showing us the good old-fashioned Sheldon Fiend grunt. It's that Cortex combo, as old as time, as old as Cortex itself. Still very, very valid in this modern day and age. The Abductor Shuriken composition is hilarious here, too. I actually like the Abductors a whole lot more now that the uh, EMP Bombers have been nerfed quite a lot. It actually makes a lot of sense to go for those Abductors. A, because it means that you can target down really specific units a lot better. You can you can make sure that the Titans and the, uh, you know, all, all those heavy units, Titans and Demons and Razorbacks, all those really, really heavy hitters stay paralyzed or become paralyzed a little more consistently, I want to say, than the uh, EMP Bombers. That and the EMP bombers now costing like 29,000 energy or something like that means they're, uh, oh yeah, quite, quite expensive to field here. 38,000 energy, my goodness. Advanced Geo pops right there. To nobody's surprise, those Sheldon were more than happy to blast that down. Spybot's moving forward right here. There was actually a uh, intrusion countermeasure somewhere around here. Forgot where it was exactly, but somebody had built one. Oh, there it is. We've got, got another one coming up in the back line. Those are quite handy. A little bit nuanced, but quite handy, nonetheless. They're, uh, they're one of those things that you're quite happy to have when you're happy to have it. But when you don't need it, pretty much you don't need it. The sentence of all time. EMP, OP, indeed. Let's look at the range on this thing. Wow, you really can't see. That thing has a crazy range. That's almost half the map. That is, that is probably more than half the map. Yeah. <laughs> total, total diameter on that. Crazy huge range. Very, very nice. I would definitely be a fan of seeing maybe a couple more, uh, a couple more EMP missiles here and there. Found the gap. Prize out the uh, spectator in chat here. Looks like a whole bunch of bombers are going to come across. They do find the Aphises. Down go the bombs, and boom goes the base of Rubble Node. Beautiful little bombing run here. The abductors are moving across to try and do whatever they can, paralyze whatever they can. There we go. Yeah, shut down the lab, shut down the anti-air, shut it all down. They're fairly well armored means, of course, that they can uh, withstand a little bit of light anti-air fire. Catapult's actually finding some serious value over here. How many kills does this have? 36 kills, my goodness. Catapult's one of those units that just never ceases to be a treat to watch. Mass Shiva push over here, though. Oh, we're gonna keep our uh, welders completely static. That is the ideal circumstance. Static and clumped up. Shiva gonna have no issues breaking through that T2. The T1. It will all burn to that rapid... Well, not rapid fire per se, but that heavy condensed matter cannon. Uh, I guess they've got twin cannons, don't they? A demon is out. That's pretty scary. Do we have any of those uh, spy bots left? I don't see any. Demon quite good, though. I do believe the demon actually beats all of these Sheldon. Uh, sorry, they, it obviously beats the Sheldon. The Shiva is what I meant to say. Mostly just trying to clean up the chaff coming through here, though. For what it's worth, doing a damn good job of it. Now, the demon is not as maneuverable as it once was. Still quite maneuverable for a T3, though. Ah, you know what? I vastly misread that situation. All right. Sheldon Shiva. There's a combo I haven't seen all too much of. But it does appear to be quite effective. Abductors up in the air. Yeah, they came to paralyze that demon, but it didn't even matter. Demon went down before they could even get across the field. Not the fastest units in the book, per se. 
We are reclaiming their metal extractor. Ah, there we go. The blue team realizes that it's only a matter of time before the heavy T3 investment kicks in and the red team comes stomping across the map here. In the end, it'll be the eco advantage that wins out in this match and beyond our reason. I absolutely love watching these top level players play. Just goes to show exactly what you can get done in such a short amount of time in one of these epic games of Beyond Our Reason. Let me, let me know what you think about this. 34 minutes, but it definitely felt like we got to that epic late game. But uh, I'm always happy to hear from you guys down below in the comment section. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, everybody.